Tone call. Thanks for tuning in, guys. So, on this week's video, we have a Mesa Boogie 412 cabinet. In a few of the comments recently, a few of you guys were like, oh, we were talking about the speaker giveaway and the eminent speakers, and I think there was two guys, one of you was saying like, oh, I want to do something with my vintage 30s. So, we've messed around with all this stuff for like months, actually, and... Um, we just mic'd up the Mesa Boogie 412 here. It's got two vintage 30s in it, and it has two eminent speakers in it. One of them is a Swamp Thing, and one of them is a Texas Heat. Forgive me, forget. You know, we just distance mic'd it. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of work to mic up individually all the different cabs, so I think it sounds great. You know, you can get a lot of stuff like you get that like chuggy sound if you want to call it that so yeah we wanted to just uh do a short little video about this and we got that thing mic'd up with this, this stellar mic. And this is a condenser mic. I got this, or we got this last year um, from Vocal Booth. I think it's a channel on YouTube. And so I, it, I think it was under 200 bucks. And they must have sold out and I had to get on a waiting list or something. Yeah, I, and we think it's an awesome mic. Uh, you know, and those can be really expensive. So that's something, maybe if you guys are interested in that. Next week, we're going to do the drawing for that speaker. We're going to get that out to one of you guys, and then you guys can check it out in your own cab. Some of the stuff you heard right at the beginning was a continuation on from last week in my writing part. And uh, I've been working on that, and uh, we are almost ready to move into the room next door. You guys probably already know if you want to see a really awesome studio video right now, John Brown's channel. Man, he just moved into a new space, so if you guys are into nerding out on that, I am um, 
that's really cool. So I just recently watched that. Man, that was just so happy for that guy. Let's do some more riffs. Maybe I'll play some old ones. Um, maybe 2005, because this is what this cabinet reminds me of. Let's see what we can think of. Old songs of mine. Let's try that again. fun to play back in the day man i had a brutal singer back then in a band papadakos was his last name what else what's some other stuff i can show you guys here we're into story let's get personal for a minute here you know i grew up in music my grandfather was a banjo picker man he was awesome i grew up in a house where we didn't go to disney and now that i'm an adult i'm thankful that we didn't go to that place i grew up with about a thousand records and i was around every type of music you could imagine I'm talking Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd, Rick James, Jeff Beck, Van Halen, The Doors, all that cool stuff. And you know, when I got into guitar, I was at my buddy James's house. We had a buddy over there with a guitar and gosh, we must have been 14 and I think he showed me a couple Metallica things or something like that it was when Master of Puppets was out. And there were two different parts. And well, I think I stayed on that guitar that night till I learned them. And I think the guy was like, wow, you know? And I'm like, man, can you show me some more? And so my aunt played guitar also. And she lent me this old harmony that she wasn't using. And, um, Man, I played on that thing. That sucker hurt my fingers so bad. And in our house, if you wanted something, you worked for it and you bought it. And the nice thing about growing up like that is, is you learn to feed and fend for yourself. So I was bagging groceries at 14. And I, all, I worked before I was 14, actually. But that was my first official job uh, where I would you know, by the time I was 17, have benefits and vacation time and all that, having three or four years into that place. But um, I begged and begged them groceries till I got a Kramer guitar. And then after that, when I was 17, I had saved my money up for a Les Paul. And uh, my buddy out in Idaho has that right now. And so I saved up for that. I bought that with my own money. And uh, I remember the guy at the music store down here, he had just passed away. And we went in there, my dad was in, went in there with me and I had my thousand dollars. And my dad was like, you know, he saved up his own money and 
and they were like, yeah, keep my husband would want that. So they sold me this Les Paul for a thousand dollars and give me a heritage guitar case. And, you know, I played that thing forever. And I, I got in a really cool band. This is a good story. So, you know, man, I would play that thing every day after school from 14, 15, 16, 17. And I went into 7-Eleven one day. I think I'd been in a band before this. And I, I went in there and there was a guy, you know, long hair and stuff. And times were different back then. And I said, uh, hey, man, you into music? Like, oh, yeah, I'm a singer. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, I have poetry. And this kid, we were kids then. He showed me these books, three books of poetry, 19 years old. We're talking, and yeah, I came from California and living in a car with my dad for eight months. Listening to this kid, he's my age, you know? And so he's like, yeah, I, I have a hundred songs. And I'm thinking, what? And this was one of the most talented people I had ever met in my life. And we had formed a band and he did have a hundred songs. He did have three books on poetry. You live in a car with your dad in someone's driveway for eight months. That will give you some place to draw from. And so I played in a band with this guy and we got some other guys together and he ended up going back out to California and got connected with some people out there. You probably, I don't even know if you'd believe me if I told you, but it doesn't matter. But they, some of the biggest names you could imagine. And uh, I, uh, he's like, you need to come out here. <laughs> I remember I had this job and I went and picked up my bonus from that job nine in the morning at this meeting. I grabbed that bonus check and right to the bank. I never went back to that job. I jumped in my truck. I had it loaded with all my music gear because I grew up being taught to work for what you want. So I had a Les Paul. I had a Marshall 4x12. I bought all those things, man. I busted my butt to get them. I had that truck packed up. And I drove all the way out to California. It must have took me 41 hours or something like that. And got out there and went out there and played. And um, man, I have some more stories. But uh, I've always had a really strong drive. And man, have I met some amazing people on the way. That stuff that I was playing wasn't from that era. But, um, you know, it was more like a rock type of thing. And. You know, we were, the bands back then, I think were, you know, Pearl Jam or Smashing Pumpkins or, you know, me, I was into like Slayer and Iron Maiden and, but yeah, got together and wrote a bunch of original music and I don't know, I just figured I'd share that with you guys, you know, all this cool stuff in here, you see, you know, I busted my butt for it and tell you what, we'll give you another story next time. So. You know, you guys, I really appreciate you, all the positive comments. And you know, if you guys have any questions, you should ask me. Ask me in the comments. If I don't know the answer, I'm not gonna tell you I do. Maybe I could get it for you. Maybe we could start something like that. Um, channel's growing little by little. And um, eight string. The eight string came in. Remember I told you I was gonna have an eight string on the channel? Yeah, no. The only reason I got it was, was almost 30 inches. I sent that sucker back, packing. I think one of our subs, Jacob and I were messaging. He was kind of schooling me. He was like, oh man, I got this Jericho. I think that's the right guy. He's like, you need to check them out. Them are pretty sweet. I'm like, well, you know, I already ordered this one. And yeah, I just sent it back, it was crap. So there's not going to be that on the channel, guys. But yeah, I don't know if I was planning on talking that much today, but man, when I landed out there in California, broke macaroni and cornbread every day. I remember when my grandma sent me money 
and I was able to go get some pizza. That's music, man. We were going out and playing with another band and I think their record company had just given them like $300,000 and I mean, it's a lot of money, but back then it was a lot. Now, you know, buy a normal house with that, but yeah, we weren't doing any money though, but we sure got to play and crap, I was young. So any young guys that are really doing it, stick with it, grind it out, man. Cheers, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>